Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we should be linked live, but I'm going to check over on our. Yeah, it says uh, it's now streaming on YouTube. Yay. All so right. We're good. Yay. <laughs> So for anyone who's joining us, um, I'm just checking out on our other side that things are linked up okay on YouTube because this is our very first YouTube live, but we thought we would try and hang out on YouTube as opposed to Facebook just to make it a little more accessible to everybody. Um, so let us know if you're there. Feel free to drop something in the comments. It's me and Karen as always here for another demonstration. Hi, everybody. And if you're if you come late, you know that's okay. This this stream is going to be recorded, right? So it's always going to be up on YouTube. It's going to stay up on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so today we're going to be showing you guys some mono printing stuff. Um, but you know what? While we're still waiting, I think I do need to figure out a way to connect because there's looks like there's two live streams, one um, that we're on now, and then the one that people are waiting for. So, oh, goodness. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, oh. everybody. Let me just see if I could figure that out real quick. How do I link this? I thought it was going to be automatic. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I wonder if I need to actually um, do the live stream from within the the YouTube, hmm. hmm. All right, let me see here. Live stream. Sorry, everybody, thanks for bearing with us. Sometimes these things happen. <laughs> um, Karen, you haven't quite done one of these before, right? Like linking? No, them. but I'm gonna go onto the channel just to see how what, what's going on there. So I'll just go okay. real quick there. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm still here, but I'm gonna go check it out real quick. Okay. See what I can see. Yeah. Well, people yeah. are waiting, so I want to uh, make sure that we're in the right place that they are waiting for us. Um, okay, so I'm on the, I'm seeing, so the live stream, it doesn't show that it's, yeah, it shows that it's, it's there. Two people are watching. I see it. Yeah. yeah but the thing is, we have the scheduled one. Um, and I know that Valerie from San Jose just joined there on the one that's previewing. So let me just let people know. But it's actually the one that's previewing is the one that's, that doesn't look like there's a preview. It looks like that's the live one. So. Well, really? Um, yeah. maybe I just need to refresh it then. Yeah. From what I'm seeing, it looked like, I'll go back to it real quick, but it looks like that's it. So I'm going to just say <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Here, Karen. I'm. Um, I dropped in the link in our in our video Zoom for the one that was scheduled, and that's the one that looks like there are 17 people waiting, but not. Okay, so let me go in. So you want me to close out of that and come back? Um. Well, there's a link that I just dropped into the chat. Box. Would you open yeah. that one too? Because I have yeah. both open at the same. Oh, I see what you mean. All right. Oh boy. So what would you like us to do there? So I see people there. Yeah, but I do see there's nothing happening. Yeah. So they're waiting for us. So what do you think? What should we do? Um, I think what I'm going to do just for the sake of not making people wait is I'm going to put in the comments of the previewed one um, to please jump over to the one that we're live on. <laughs> Okay, good. Everyone, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. Please join us for our YouTube live over at this link. Oh, all right. So there are 16 people waiting for us on the scheduled link. So we'll um, give them a little bit of time to hop over here. Oh, good. And it's actually live where we do have seven people watching. So thank awesome. you. Awesome. Okay, guys. good. Head all out. right. Yay. So there's people that yeah, perfect. All right. Yeah. Yay. We'll get it together. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, for a few more people to join us from the other link. Yeah. So we somehow have two going. That's <laughs> yeah, that is a little bit odd because we did do a trial run and hadn't anticipated this. It seems like it was going to link up automatically, but we are learning. That's right. Figuring things out. Um, all right. So I'm going to just also include that in the description for the, for the scheduled one. And in the meanwhile, um, 
you might be able to tell I'm a little bit sick, so I'm not looking and sounding my best. So I'm going to remove my spotlight so we can look at Karen's beautiful work instead. Hello. So yeah, let me know when you want me to uh, just start diving in. Um, I can okay. kind of just kind of arrange everything, get it ready for everybody. And we've got our, we've got our Niji artist crayons. I'm going to do use some of these today. I'm going to use um, I'm going to use a jelly plate. This is going to be the start. Well, after we do one more thing, but I'm going to use this jelly plate. It's an eight by ten jelly plate, and I'm going to use the sketch paper, which is my one of my favorites. This is the six H sketch paper, and I just wanted to show you that these papers are all made with the uh, with the rice papers, and they've been uh, jelly printed, and these are like little stackable boxes. And uh, just wanted to show you how much you what you can do with with these um, papers and they're so durable and fun. So, and I'm also going to use household items to make uh, marks with. So I've got all kinds of little household things. I've got these little rolls that come from the uh, restroom. I put rubber bands around them. So we've got some fun things to, to work with today. Um, for I've got a, a Baron, which is a, bam, this is a banana. Is there a banana or a ba bamboo? I forgot. I think it's, a banana leaf, I might be wrong. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a great little uh, burnishing tool for printmaking. So I'm, I'm gonna have that handy. I have some Sumi ink and I have lots of acrylic paints that I'm gonna work with, heavy bodied and fluids. And I have uh, lots of stencils and some rice paper. So, but the first thing, and is it good to start now, Phoebe, you think? Yeah, I'm going to say go ahead and take it away. We've been joined by a lot of people now, um, and we have 17, so I think we caught up our numbers. Awesome. So glad everybody's here. So I've got some brayers here. These are kind of uh, gently used or not gently used. I've got three different size brayers. I just kind of wanted to have some fun um, with uh, doing some monoprinting on rice paper, and the star of this is the rice paper because rice paper is so amazing for monoprinting. And, and we're going to use jelly plate. We're going to use um, hand homemade things. Uh, another thing I kind of have on my, I have a, a palette knife that I keep handy. I'm, I've got some palette paper, some scrap paper, just some plain, you know, typing paper that I have. Um, another thing that's really great for pulling prints is some of the 6A, it's, sort of a, it's, a, it's a Japanese uh, tissue paper. It's actually it's a calligraphy practice paper and see how translucent it, it is. And I can't wait to use this on the jelly plate because you can get a stack of 500 sheets. This is like, it's really nice and it's different than deli paper. It does, it's more absorbent. So there's things you can do to it that you can't do with deli paper or wax paper because it's very, it's more absorbent. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you all the fun things that we're going to do with that. The first thing I wanted to share with you is this fun little technique that I kind of, I don't know, I was just playing around one day. And uh, I have, we have this pure paper. It comes in hundred colors. It's pure color on all sides. It's a six inch square. It's origami paper, but it's also great for mixed media. So I've got this, you can see what, uh, these are the finished pieces right here. Um, the other day I was just doing this for the preview or the live or the whatever we were doing. <laughs> we were sort of testing our, that we could do this on YouTube. And it was so, it's just so much fun and, and very satisfying. So I'm gonna show you this technique because it really can be done on probably most papers, but I like the idea I have a color core. So I've got this beautiful blue background and I'm going to do, I think I'll just do some, I'll start working with these artist crayons. Now, the artist crayons are wax. They're like, they're way better than a crayon. I'll tell you that because crayons or Crayola crayons, are, they're great, but they're crayons. Um, they don't have as much pigment and they're not as, as rich as these, but you can use crayons to do this too. If you don't have any, um, you know, artist crayons, you can certainly use crayon crayons. Uh, the other thing, I'm just drawing kind of a, some shapes, some things in here. I'm using different colors, making some marks, kind of going from the center outward. And I'm kind of, you could do anything. You can scribble, you could um, color, you know, create like, I'm just going to just make I'm just going to scribble, heck with it. I'm going to just make some circles <laughs> and just have some fun. I'm warming myself up for the next thing. So just kind of warm yourself up. Um, then I'm going to use some clear. And the reason I'm using the clear is you don't see it now, but you will later. Um, so I'm just going to make some circles and shapes and kind of cover, not all of it, but cover some of a great deal of this paper just to show you 
and kind of what, what, what this is all about. I mean, you can do some writing, scribble, you know, anything. I'm just doing that. <laughs> just kind of have some fun. So I'll do this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap paper because I want to make sure, uh, I don't want to mess up my table too much just yet, but I'm going to put some um, acrylic paint over this. So I'm finished with the crayons. I kind of rushed that one, but you know, I, you can take your time and really make a nice drawing. Um, and I'm going to put some black on top, but I could put any color. I think a dark color is going to work really well. Um, you could use, um, you could mix, if you had only sumi ink and that was your only black, you could mix it with a little bit of acrylic fluid medium. Now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to do it straight. I'm going to do a little bit of just ink by itself on one side. And then the other side I'll do with a little gloss medium and you'll see what I mean. I'm just going to grab a brush, a little brush here. And actually this brush is way too fat, but I'll try to get it in there. <laughs> there it is. So when I put the ink in, nope, I know, I know it would help. It would help to put it in, in a dish. There we go. So I've got some ink inside and you're going to see when I put that ink over the paper, how it's just, it's resisting like right now. You can see there's the, the resist is really, really obvious, the uh, wax. And I wanna show you, I'm gonna do half of it with the, um, with, the, with the just ink alone. And then the other half will be with some acrylic or some mixed with uh, some medium. So there it is, it's resisting just beautifully. And now I'm gonna put a little bit of gloss medium, not much, just a little. And I'm not gonna put much in there. I'm gonna just dribble just a maybe, I don't know if you see how much I'm dribbling, but it's probably, it's very small. It's a maybe a half a teaspoon or even less. I'm just gonna put that here and mix that up with the uh, Sumi ink. So now what I've just created is a pigmented, or it's pigmented, all right, but it has a medium in it. So it's going to, it's going to go onto the, um, paper and it's totally covering it. See, but it's not resisting at all. It looks like it's not resisting. So it's really kind of like a black, kind of made a black acrylic paint. And it's, if you notice, the ink is now very, very dense. And this is what, what I love about Sumi ink and then adding my own medium to it. I'm just gonna kind of cover it all the way because I really wanna cover it. Um, I wanna cover this whole thing. Um, the thing that's nice about it is the versatility with the with the ink that you wouldn't get if you just bought some black uh, acrylic paint. So it's basically covering up the whole thing. And what I need to do is let that dry completely. Now, yesterday we did a little trial run. So I did one already that where I started it. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, move this out of the way. And I have this piece here that was already done same way, where I just used some black, um, I used some black Sumi ink with, I don't think I used acrylic on this one, but you could use any black, acrylic or something that has, that's gonna cover it completely. So I'm gonna let that, set that aside, let it dry. And now I've got this thing. Let's pretend that that was that one, it's dry now. And what's really cool about this, you could use a palette knife, you could use a uh, credit card, a scraping, any kind of scraping tool. And what you're gonna get is you're gonna be able to pick up the colors underneath. And this was yesterday, I did a little sunflower thing. And I think the base, it's just, a, it was an off white. So I didn't do a blue color. But look how cool that is. I mean, you can, I'm getting I'm getting the sunflower. This is what I did yesterday. Um, and I'm able to scrape off the color. And I'm seeing, you know, I've got all this little residue of the acrylic paint. And some of the crayon is actually coming off with it. That's um, so fun. Yeah. What was that? I was just saying that's so fun. I Isn't that fun? Yeah. It's very really satisfying, isn't it, baby? So basically, you can do this. And um, you've got... Um, you've got basically once you've pulled off all of the little uh, pieces of you know once you've got it all off and it doesn't take a lot of work I'm not working really hard to do this it seems like this works better a palette knife or something kind of flat scraping tool works a little bit better than the plastic but the plastic works too so if you wanted to do this with kids or something I think it's a really great project to do and and look how cool you get these papers that are fabulous. Um, no, Aaron, others, someone was asking, um, Grace was asking, would oil pastels work as a sub for the crayons? I think the oil pastels would probably work. Um, they may be, they're not as hard, like because they're soft, they may uh, make a softer, they'll still resist. Yes, they'll resist, but, um, and I don't have any oil pastels on me, but they, they will do this, but probably not as crisp of a line, if that makes sense. 
But yeah, I think it should work. And any any crayons and anything that you might have in your stash that's wax, um, wax based, even beeswax, if you've got um, things that you want to work with. But isn't that fun? So you can create these kind of fun papers. And then the cool part about these is what I love about these papers is let's say you want to do a collage and you've created this really interesting marks and stuff. And now you want to tear your paper. And look, you have that gorgeous color core underneath. And that's what, to me, this is what makes it so incredibly uh, versatile and fun. So, so let's, you know, these pure papers, they, they're, we list them as an origami paper, but I find them as a fabulous mixed media paper. And it's wonderful for, uh, for just, you know, you can glue this on to any uh, little piece like ATC cards or collages, and you've got these wonderful, colorful cores with colorful, with marks on them. So that was one, mm -hmm. one question for you. Yes. What about China pencils? Yes, China markers would be perfect. Yes, yep, they would be really good. But what you could do too with the China marker too, um, China markers are gonna give you a nice fine line so you can do lots of little sort of uh, graphic kind of uh, stuff. And I'm just gonna clean this thing off because I'm gonna go, next thing I'm gonna do, if you have more questions regarding that technique, um, certainly you can do with all kinds of, any kinds of papers, but that core, I love this paper because of it. it's a versatility in the sense that, it's got that color core. So now we're gonna move on to the rice papers. And if, you know, please ask questions as I know I'm going fast. We have only, we don't have one, uh, we've maybe got less, maybe have 40, 45 minutes to go. So I've got lots yeah. to cover. So I'm gonna take my jelly plate out. And I'm gonna, if you notice, jelly plates always come with these little clear sheets. I don't use those once I, once they're, I don't store them that way. The way I store them is I use a piece of typing paper, um, something to, once they're, basically what that does is it makes it for a very nice, clean, nice smooth surface for when you're doing your mono printing. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my little, uh, that's just some office, plain office paper, and I'm going to lay my plate right where I, you guys can see it, hopefully. Yep. And now we're going to get started on our jelly printing, mono printing adventure. This is where I'm going to have a variety of things. And I'm also going to jelly print on this pure paper because it's just such cool stuff. Um, so the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to start by kind of introducing things that are something you can find around in your house. Like this here is, a, I think this was for a, was an ad, some kind of potato sack. I don't know what it, I think it was. I'm going to put it directly on the plate just before I do anything. I'm just gonna lay it on the plate and the plate has a little stickiness to it, kind of a tackiness to it. And then I'm gonna lay, I'm just gonna lay a couple of things down. I've got this, this came from a, I don't think it was, so it's kind of elastic, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but now I'll just do it like this, or maybe I could lay down, this is probably a little bit better. This is some, a potato sack or something, but I'm gonna stick it on the surface of the plate. Just let it sit like that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take some paint. And I'm going to take, oh, what color? That's the toughest thing, figuring out what colors. <laughs> so I'm going to put some paint directly onto the surface. Just, and I think I'm going to mix them up a little bit. So I've got a little phthalo turquoise, just a little. I'm going to kind of dribble it on. I've got a few drops full, maybe, maybe five drops like that. And then I'm going to probably do a little teal. This is golden teal. The other one was Holbein. Um, but this is a very opaque. Uh, this teal is very opaque. The turquoise is very transparent. So I'm just going to put those on and I'm going to take my brayer and I'm just going to roll right over my, roll it right over these, uh, this stuff here. So it's got this interesting, it's kind of mixing together and uh, getting this really gorgeous ocean kind of pretty color, very, very yummy. And I'm going to take, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, I'm just going to roll that onto my table. And I'm going to take some of this tissue paper. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the tissue paper and I'm going to go directly over this. And this is my first, it's not even a print, but I wanted to kind of clean off some of the uh, paint that's underneath. But this is the rice paper, 6A or 6E. This is our, it's kind of like Japanese tissue paper, even though I know it's meant for calligraphy, but I think it's awesome and is in place of a, uh, oh, wow. So now what's going on is I'm not only picking up Ooh, this is pretty. I'm picking up the, the actual, <laughs> I'm actually picking up the stuff, which I'm getting a beautiful impression here. So that's exciting. And now what I did is I did pick up the stuff that's here and I'm gonna just remove that very carefully. 
it isn't wax paper, so I've got to be kind of gentle because I pressed kind of hard and I don't want to pull up too much of the, and I'm going to get it off there. I'm not ripping it. I'm just trying to pull that off. So what I have now, really cool, is I have a, my first, something kind of neat there that I'm going to use later. I'm just going to stick it over to the side for now. But I have this gorgeous, um, this design going on here. And it, it's actually, I'm going to leave it alone because it needs to maybe put another layer of paint on top and maybe another stencil. So this time though, instead of, uh, instead of, uh, I think what I'm going to do is going to put a little bit of some, another color. I'm just going to try to find a nice transparent color. I think I'm going to use mauve. I've not used that in a long time. Just try, you know, different, different types of um, colors and play, you know, whatever paints you have, just kind of play. And I'm going to put some mauve onto this plate and that's a gorgeous color. And it's, it's uh, my my design is still underneath and it's I'm trying to keep this uh, color transparent because I want to see what's going on underneath. Um, so I'm kind of going to avoid the, the uh, blue, you know, the uh, teal and I'm going to probably I'll go ahead and just put a little bit of this. This is um, quinacridone crimson. Wow. Pretty color. And I'm going to just gonna put a little bit of that. And I'm going to try to roll it out so that it's uh, transparent. And then I'm going to take a stencil and actually this time I'm going to take some bubble wrap because bubble wrap is an all time wonderful thing to use for mono printing. And uh, everybody usually gets bubble wrap at one time or another, right? <laughs> so got my bubble wrap and now I'm going to pick it up off. Oh, and it's got some of the old paint transferred onto it. How fun is that? I kind of like that when that happens. So that's from another, uh, session and I have these little artifacts of paint and that's going onto this plate which will transfer onto the next print which I think is really fun so I'm just excited about that. Um, what I could do too now is I've got I'm just doing some layers basically taking this and just making layers and I think with um, I'll take this Payne's gray it's a little on the dark side but I want you to see it but a little bit dark that's Payne's gray I'm going to just do maybe one it's a pretty dark color. But I'm going to try to do another impression. Um, I'm just going to do half of that plate right now, just half. I'm just going very thin. You can see I'm not using a lot of paint in any of this. And this is something I found. This was came in a, uh, it was a package, something. It was this interesting bubble stuff. And I thought it would be really fun to make, uh, a, you know, to use for this. I'm just going to pick it up and now you can see these beautiful lines are on that. And I could do the same thing with a little bit of maybe some ultramarine blue. Let's take a little bit of that and just put a little blue on there. And I'm even liking the colors that are happening on my little, on my paper there. And I'm just gonna, I'm keeping the paint really thin. I'm not trying to overdo it. When I first started working with these, this kind of thing, it just wasn't, uh, the paper was, or the paint I put on way too thick. So here I've got a little, some foam, some whatever that is. And I've got, I might even try some squiggly stuff going on here. I've got a little tool. It's like a little silicone brush. I'm just going to kind of draw into it. And it's getting dry, which is kind of nice. The paint is actually drying a little bit on the plate. And that's a good thing, actually. But I still want to get a little bit of uh, some, some marks on it. So you can see I did that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, uh, get, get my rice paper ready. And this one I'm going to take, I'm going to use some of our Kozo paper. This is a really great, gorgeous paper. It has a slight off-white tone to it, slightly translucent. It's acid-free and it's a really art. It's a very good quality paper. Um, the reason I picked this is because it's off-white. I'm going to put some white this is some white um, and make sure that's kind of dry and pretty much dry now on my plate. So I'm going to take some white and I'm going to <laughs> put it on the plate. I don't want to put too much. I tend to overdo it. So I'm going to try to be, you know, keep it thin. And I want to go kind of fast because if I don't go fast then it will dry and then it won't transfer onto the uh, paper. So I'm just going kind of quick here. And now there we go. That's probably, it might be too, we'll see what happens. It may be too thick. I'm going to go, I've got the smooth side down on the paper. I'm using the smooth side of the um, rice paper. And I'm going to use the Baron. And I'm going to really push it, just get that paint, try to get it inside the fibers of the paper. 
So just, and then you can tell if it's working or not. If you're, if you pull the, if you can see when I'm pulling the bottom, you see how it's lifting up the color a little bit. That's a good sign, but I'm gonna keep it going a little bit more. At the same time, thing with jelly printing, let's just to say when you're monoprinting like this, it's called, it's a lot of multitasking is happening here. <laughs> so you've got to kind of, you know, be ready to uh, give yourself lots of room and lots of uh, um, play time. Don't, don't take it too seriously. Just have fun with it. So here we go. It's lifting most of the, it's lifting it mostly off, but not all of it. And if that happens, it's okay. For my next print, I'll have some artifacts from the last one. So I'm just going to kind of get it. I could leave this on for uh, 10 minutes if I wanted to, to really have it um, work really well. But I'm just going to lift it off as much as I can. It looks pretty good. Now I do see some of the uh, paper or some of the paint isn't, um, it's kind of sticking to the plate, but that's all right because I'm going to still, I'm going to use that in the other, that'll be cool looking in the other one. But you can see how beautiful the, some of the marks are and um, how that, and those colors, how beautiful they are. I'm going to just- That's Gorgeous. It. Isn't it? Oh my gosh. So this paper now, and it's, it is beautiful. Um, yeah. These little white areas are areas that looks like paper. It looks like when I'm looking at it, um, it just stayed on the plate. So that means that's translucent. What I will do with this is after it dries, I, I can take this with some um, wax, like some furniture wet polish um, or some uh, micro glaze, anything with a wax. And I can put that on top and it will make those more translucent. Or when I'm gluing it to a surface for a collage, those will almost disappear. So, but I love, I'm loving this little area here. So there's number one on the Kozo. You see how strong that is, but it's very thin. So I'm gonna just gonna put that aside for now. I'm gonna to have to make room to throw lots of prints down on the floor. <laughs> so here we've got this one. I'm gonna get another uh, stencil that I haven't ever used yet, and I can't wait. So I want to tell you about stencils. When you're working with stencils, this is a brand new one. I just never brand new, and you don't. Of course, my stencils never stay beautiful. Uh, but I have a little secret about cleaning. If you want them clean, at least not have lots of junk on them. Um, I use a combination of Murphy's oil soap, a little bit of Murphy's oil soap, a little bit of dish soap and water, and I make a spray and I'll spray that after I've used it. And that will help to make it easier to clean up later on. That's if you want to do that kind of thing. Not everybody cares, you know, but I kind of want to keep my stencils from getting gummed up. So because it just makes them, I don't think is clear. So I'm going to put some uh, paint, some, I think this is like a Oh, well, this is a Liquitex light blue permanent. So it's a light, uh, heavy body paint. And I'm just going to take my uh, brayer and I'm just going to roll it directly onto the, over the stencil because I wanted to have, I like the impressions that when you do it directly onto the plate, you get a really interesting impression. Now, the first thing, I don't want to waste my paint, right? So I'm going to put, while I'm doing this, I'm going to put some of that rice paper tissue, that yummy tissue over it right now. I'm gonna take a little piece of this six, back to the 6A or the thin tissue paper. And I'm gonna go put it on right now so that I have, so that I can pick up the paint that's excess and I'll have a new print. I'll have a, this is a print on its own because it's gonna look really, really pretty. And there we go. I'm gonna just lift it up and there I've got this incredible, gorgeous light blue tissue paper print, which I have some plan. I can do some fun things with, but there it is. I'll let it sit. I'll just set it aside. And now I've got this piece here. I can do it, run another one, pull another one. And just do another one, see what I get. And I can use, now this is a delicate paper. I think this, this should work. It shouldn't tear it. Um, sometimes, there you go, it's going in nicely. So now I'm using the Baron that's gonna not tear the paper. And now I didn't get much there. I got a little bit, but that's okay. I got just a nice little soft, very soft ghost print of that, which I can use later. And now I've got this gorgeousness here. Now this one, and what I do now with this one is I can, I can take that spray, I'll do it in another place, so you're not seeing it, but I'm gonna spray that and just spray the stencil while, and then let it sit. And you can leave your stencils there and you're not gonna come back to a gummy mess to clean up really nicely. So now I've got this really cool thing going on here. And I'm gonna let that kind of sit a little bit. And I'm going to find some more rice paper that I think would be fun to try. 
The one that another one that I really like is the Gossen. I think it's a 6G, it's called. And 6G has a smooth and a rough surface. And I always want to print and you want to paint on the smooth side. The rough side is the side you would glue if you're gluing it together. So I'm going to hold that, putting that to the side. I've got this really pretty thing happening, but I'm trying to give it a little time to dry. Um, what you could do is you could, it should be, yeah, it should be dry enough. I'm going to use some of this uh, Payne's gray. I like this gray because it's kind of a, it's dark, but it's a uh, neutral and it's black can be just a little severe. So I just try to put a little bit of this on it and I'm going to use my little brayer and do my thing. Even the brayer makes a nice um, print, you know, a nice, really interesting uh, marks basically. So there I've got a nice light coat of this Payne's gray over that. And then I want to put a little bit of white, but I want to give it a little time. So I've got to, um, I'm going to spread out a little bit more. Here we go. <laughs> that's going to be a nice looking under. That's just nice on its own. So there we've got a little bit of that. Um, if I could uh, put some, some stencils, I have to tell you about these. Even some of my club members have seen these. We've done these together, but this is actually made out of glue gun. Use, I used a glue gun to make these. So just, I put the glue gun on um, a piece of glass, or you can put it on a heat resistant, something heat resistant. And then you've got, uh, you've got a stencil that you can make. So glue guns make, are perfect stencil makers. <laughs> so I'm gonna just like, I should actually probably, all right, a little bit of, of this teal color. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this opaque color. Try not to use too much. And uh, I'll put this onto, I'm just gonna roll it right on. Now this is gonna be another tissue paper experiment because I wanna roll it on, but I try to get it in between if I can. And since the roller of course is not going to, it's letting me go in a little bit, which is kind of fun. I'm getting a little of the opaque uh, teal color, but I'm not getting, uh, it's not going, not covering the whole plate, which is a good thing. But I'm also putting some on top of the stencil. You know, I mean, yeah, these glue gun stencils. So I'm just gonna roll it over, kind of be aggressive here as much as I can. Get it in the grooves. I'm pressing hard. So now, yep, I'm getting it in the grooves. If you remember, the jelly plates are flexible. So they have a little cushion to them. So I'm gonna take some of that tissue again and use that as just a way to kind of get some of that paint off. Plus I also have a print just by doing that. So I'm double duty, doing double duty here. Okay, let's see what that looks like. And I'm just gonna pick it up a little bit there. I think it might've dried quickly, but still have something. I've got that tissue paper and then I'm gonna pull these off and look what happened. It pulled off the paint that was underneath, which is what I was hoping for. So I've got this really knit, nice, uh, so this basically picked up a lot of the paint that was underneath. So now we've got another amazing little layer there. So that is gonna look so pretty. Now I'm gonna take my 6G and I'm gonna try this paint. I haven't tried it on a, a gel plate yet, but it's a beautiful warm white color by TriArt. And I thought it'd be really fun to try it. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I can see some colors from, from the uh, stencils, little copper here, over here and there, little bits of other colors, which I love. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and I have to move kind of quickly here on this too, because it's, uh, I got to go while it's still wet. I have my rice paper is ready for me. It's a nice, gorgeous, warm white, yummy, really pretty. And I have to keep it as thin as I can. There we go. And now I'm just going to put my smooth side down on the 6G. And this way I need to do the same thing here. And I'm, then I'm going to pull out the 6H to show you that. Um, 6H is a much brighter and a much less expensive paper, but um, it's wonderful to do the monoprinting and jelly printing on. Let's see how it picks up. Now I've got to give it a little more time. <laughs> and we have, uh, well, we've got some time, so good. This is sometimes where it's really good to have two plates, one to sit and wait and the other one to paint on. Well, we're doing great on time, Karen. Don't worry. I'm uh, since I'm in a different location, we are not limited. <laughs> like, oh, good. Oh, yeah. good. We can do this till till ten o'clock tonight. No, just kidding. <laughs> we'll just be doing this all night. Yeah, we'll have happy hour dinner. <laughs> so basically, you just want to leave that on for a little bit um, to try to get the paint to come off. There, it comes. there it is. So 
It might be a little coming off with it, but you know, a little bit of it stays on. But look how gorgeous that is. I don't know if you see it, but there, this part is looking fabulous. This part still has some paint, but I'm not going to worry. It's not perfection we're looking for. We just look for the joy of it. But to get a really good print um, where it pulls off everything, now see some of it's pulling the paper off, which that is a thing I didn't want to have. So I'm going to just go with that. It's uh, pulling some of the paper off. Now that's never happened to me, but it's always a first. So this paper, the 6G, pro uh oh, <laughs> it's stuck. It's stuck. Oh, but it was such a beautiful print too. Oh man. Okay. So what happened was the rice paper was, oh wow, gorgeous print though. But the paper um, did pull off because it was just too sticky for it. So what that means, and I'm going to save these, these are beautiful. That was a gorgeous print and I can't be too, too, uh, you know, attached, I guess. So what I'm going to do now is I've got this going on. So I'm going to put some, um, it's stuck. So what I'm going to have to do is take some of my 6H, which is going to be a lot sturdier. Uh, well, these things happen. So I'm going to take some more of my white paint, or maybe just a color, just to show you. I'll put some blue down. And because I've got all this sticky stuff. So I'm hoping that this will come off just with the paint. We'll see. If it doesn't, then there's this plan, plan B, or I can get another plate <laughs> in for, for saving time. Um, I would have probably at this time, we'll see how this works. But um, if you're in a place where you really you know, want to, don't want that to happen again, you probably want to clean off your, your plate, <laughs> clean it off with, and then start over. But let's see, let's see what happens. Now this paper is a lot more strong. It has a, a different type of, uh, it's just different. So it's pulling all the paint off beautifully. See how beautiful that print? So it's coming out really nicely, but the little artifacts of the what I had there is still on there, which might just be a permanent part of my jelly printing for today. So I'm not, but that's okay. I'm gonna leave it there. So there, that's really beautiful on 6H. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try again what I had tried before. I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna leave those there because I'm just gonna not, I mean, if you wanted to, you could just, let's just do this. I'll just kind of scrape it off a little bit. Or if I wanted to, I can, this is another thing. Take some moisture, you know, some hand sanitizer, put it on and I'm just gonna just dribble it on. And now you get to see the little, the when things had go wrong, right? You get to see, <laughs> well, not wrong, but just, you know, they are what they are. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna get that off, that paper, because the paper, is gonna keep me from having a really nice smooth plate. So I'm just gonna get that off, but I don't really wanna worry about it being perfectly clean. I just need those chunks of paper, which is right here and right here. So you notice the jelly plate seems really super delicate, but really it's not. I mean, it's they're pretty durable. Yeah, I got it all, pretty much got it all. Now, now let that be. So now it's time to get back to what I was doing. So back to what we were doing. I'm gonna to try to repeat what I did before because I love that look. I'm gonna put a little turquoise on. I'm gonna to have to use a different stencil though because I already wet the stencil. I'm gonna put a little, this time, actually I'll put those other ones back on, um, the ones that I liked. Now there's a little thin thing of turquoise and I'm gonna take my little, um, these little guys again. A little, I love these things glue gun stencils and how amazing they are as far as um, durable. They're so durable and they don't cost much. I mean, and you can make lots of them and you know, you're, you're uh, it doesn't cost anything. You could make like this one here is in a little leaf shape and put the leaves over here. I'm just trying to cover up the plate that I, if I can. And then I'm just gonna go over it, kind of push down really hard onto the plate so that it kind of sticks to it. And then I'm going to use my paper just to kind of blot off and push my tissue paper and just blot off the excess and get in the grooves here. And there we go. And there I've got a nice little, I've got some things happening here, which is nice. It pulled off. That's really fun. I love that little shape happening in there. So now I'm going to take the 6H paper that, I, well, to take these off first. I've got those, gonna move those out of the way. And these I never clean, I don't bother with these. I think they look more interesting the more, the more paint I put on them. So there you've got that. That's really nice. I see that's really beautiful. And now I'm gonna take another stencil I've never used. <laughs> I thought this was fabulous looking. Um, 
I think it's called a mask, not a stencil, but this is really, it, it's interesting looking to me. And I'm going to put some of the light blue on it, like this color. And I'm just gonna go right on top, just like dribble, dribble. And then I'm going to just, just go right over that stencil. And it's a very light color and it's pretty, it's pretty opaque because you can see it's pretty opaque. And now with this one, I'm gonna take the right, that thin tissue paper and see what kind of impression I can get here. I'm hoping I can get a nice one. I'm just gonna pull off that excess paint. And I think it's gonna be a really nice, really nice impression. Yes, oh, nice, 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 nice. So this is just my tissue paper pull, but boy, it looks gorgeous. And I'm gonna tell you what you can do with this tissue paper later. Wow, look at that. So that is gorgeous, but I've got to be careful because I don't want it to tear. <laughs> it's a little more delicate than deli paper, but it's so gorgeous. And yeah, there Someone goes. commented um, what you're doing looks like batik. It does, huh? The color, kind of the color, uh, the color combinations. Now I'm tearing this paper. Once again, I tore it. So if you're doing this with deli paper, you're not going to get tearing, but I'm going to save some of these papers. I'm not going to lose that because I love the look of that. So I'm going to just pull it off as much as I can. And now I've got some papers here that I'm going to save. It came out gorgeous, but it's just a little on the thin side. So I'll just save that. And then I've got this little stuff here and I'm going to just pull this stencil up because it's really on there. And that's the beauty, you know, the thing about this, you know, everything has just got to get pulled off. There it goes. <laughs> and I'll just stick that into the little bath. <laughs> and I think I just kind of, these stencils are funny. The, some of them are really, um, they're very delicate. So <laughs> I kind of, I was a little rough on it, but look how beautiful that is. So, um, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. That by itself, I just want to keep that, right? So this time I'm going to use the 6H because I've got 6H as my, my go-to because it's strength. I've got it ready here and I'm going to use a little mixture of, I think I'm going to use this white, the warm white again, because I like that. And I'm just going to put it straight on like this and go quickly because if I take too long, and I do see that I have some little bits of tissue in there, but that's all right. There, yeah, like this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then I'm just going to pull, take the 6H, and that's the smooth side down, and put it down. Let's we'll see what this one looks, looks like. We'll just use that if you really want to get it burnished down, the barren. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. This time I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to be ginger about it. I'm going to be aggressive, and I'm going to pull it up. And uh, that is so pretty. And I, what's nice is I have these nice um, pieces Nope, I pulled the paper again. I've been getting some sticky situations today, but look at that. Very pretty. So I'm going to stick that to the side and I'm going to, I've got this to work with and I'll do some wild colors. Maybe I'm going to try a little quinacridone red. And this time I'm going to use another stencil because I can. <laughs> I've got another one here that I got that I want to just try. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just dribble it straight on different color altogether than what I was doing before. And then just gonna put it on this and then I'll do a quick pull with the tissue paper, maybe not push in so 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 much, uh, maybe not so long and it should just pick up. There we go, maybe just trying it a little less. Uh, there we go, wow, that's gorgeous. So what I did is I just try not to push and I did a tour it again, but there we go. I got some nice, very nice print here. And hopefully I'll have some that will dry enough so I can show you what I'll do with it. So I'm going to pick this up. There I've got this nice little red fancy thing going on here. And I'll just put that down with my soapy water. And I've got that going. And let's try using, I'm going to do a, a multi-layered one. I've got some Kozo here. I'm just going to take one, just while it's on there. I'm just going to take some of that and I see how nicely it pulled. I can see it's pulling up some of that paint, but I, I don't care if it pulls up all of it this time. Just want to see what it pulled up. So I got a nice little shape here. Then this is going to let me show you what I'm going to do with the wax. So that's a nice little thing here. Let's try putting another stencil. <laughs> I've got lots of them today. I'm going to put this one over it because I think that's really cool. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do a little dribble. 
and then just right over it. And some of that red is coming through and the gray. And it's just pretty. I'm gonna try some of that tissue again. And this time just like a very slight touch here and then pick it up. And now I've got some gorgeous impressions here. I love that. It shows really lots of delicate you know, lines. And this piece I'm gonna pick up. Now I've got that going on. So I'm getting really fun stuff happening here. A little soapy water. And maybe if I have, should let that dry, but let's um, go move on to it. Put some other color on there. So I'm gonna put this pink and it's probably gonna lift off some of that because I have, um, I have basically it's still wet. So maybe I can try doing some fun things like taking maybe some paint directly onto, I'm gonna roll some pink onto this, this stuff here. Or actually I can roll it right onto this. So here's another fun thing you can do. You don't have to have it. You can just roll it, roll it on or dip it directly in your paint and then just stamp directly onto it. And I'm gonna get a texture that's unusual, really unusual. It's gonna be kind of a very, uh, you can see the texture like that coming through. You can see the little uh, pores or the cells of the foam here. And this is like a small pool noodle is all that is. And you can take other sides. You can do, um, you can make little, impressions here like this and there's just so many things you can do so just kind of have fun finding parts things in your house <laughs> just making you have some fun i've got some orange here i want to just do a little orange just because i wanted to mix up colors a little bit and i've got a little um, that's a pyro orange and i'm just going to roll it straight onto the this little foam uh, this stuff it's like a packing i think it held i don't know what it held some glass something glass I'm just gonna put that over and stamp it right on. So I'm getting these really soft, really interesting cellular-like uh, shapes going on here. And I'm kind of doing this because I want that dark, this dark stuff to uh, kind of dry is what I'm waiting for. Another good one would be to take some corrugated cardboard and I'm gonna use some green oxide. This stuff is really opaque. So I'm just gonna put a little green, oxide green in here. And I'm gonna do, just roll a little bit onto the, straight onto the corrugated board. And then while it's still wet, I'm gonna just do it. I'm gonna put that right here. I'm gonna create a little stamp. And there's little green lines. They look perfect. I'm gonna just do the same thing, put a little bit. I'm being really messy now, but that's, that's what happens when you're doing this. There we go, another line and maybe one more because I think that's really cool. And just kind of loosely, you know, just get the paint sort of on and then I'll stamp it over here. But I think I found a, uh, something really nice to do with the corrugated cardboard. So I'll, I'll use that over and over when I'm uh, ready to, uh, you know, for future stuff. Now this, I'm thinking it'd be fun to do uh, some, some picking, I'm just gonna pick up a little Picking up some of that pure paper. I'm gonna just pick up some of the color just to see what I can get, but I'm not picking up all of it. I'm just picking up some of the excess just so that I don't lose, I'm not lo I don't wanna lose everything, but I just wanna have kind of a little softer look. So I see areas that are still wet. I'm gonna pick up some color. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit. And what it's doing is it's not lifting everything, but it is getting it a little bit more dry. And I'm loving this design already. So you can just you know keep playing with your papers. I think that's about ready. Back to the, this time, instead of using the warm white, I'm gonna use heavy body gloss if I can find it. I know I had it, maybe not. Oh, here's another thing, it's just the rubber bands. You can roll, of course, I, I'll do that in a second here. I'm gonna use this heavy body white and I'm gonna not use this until I get all that paint up. I can use a smaller one. Let's get to that. Here we go. I'm gonna put a little bit of white on, not too much. And I'm gonna just brayer it on. Now this is a smaller brayer, so I have to move quickly. Um, and I can see some of the paint is still, is still wet. So it's kind of coming through. Now you can also take your, that looks great. There we go. I can take this little thing and just roll it through. This is my little TP line maker, mark maker. You can do these kinds of things. I think that looks great. 
And I'm going to just take some more paper, some Torinico. I haven't tried that yet. So I'm going to take some of that. Torinico is a really, has a nice, uh, very nice paper. So I'm just going to put that through the 6T, it's called. Now, what after this is done, I'm going to show you what, what, why some of those tissue papers are going to be so fabulous. Um, this one is, I uh, going to have to pull another print, but I like this print so far. It's very different, but I see I have lots of artifacts here. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and some papers from before. Some still some paper that was from the tissue paper. And I can still use that in collage or anything like that. And this one needs another. I just need to pull another quickly with the right with this white. Maybe with the white. I'll try that. I like this tri art pink because I've never seen an off white like this. It's kind of a warm white. It's either a titanium or a, you know, you, you don't get really this. This is a really pretty warm white. I really like it. So I'm going to take a, a little mark making tool and I'm just going to, you know, make marks. You can do anything with whatever, anything soft. You don't want anything that's going to go into it. Oh, cool. Is that like a smudger type thing? What that is, just a silicone. Um, it's a silicone. Um, it's called a color shaper made out of silicone. Oh, yeah. So like even your silicone spatulas or anything like that will, will work. Do, yeah, and you can even take like, I've got these rubbery. Oh, I have a, something I was going to share with you. And I don't know if you, um, these little, if you know the, the foam, the craft foam that you can buy, it's just that really cheap craft foam. You can actually make your own um, little texture making tools with the craft foam. So I just pulled up some of the paint there. So I, I was able to make all kinds of fun little shapes and things with it so just fun cheap you don't have to spend a lot of money and this is the other that stuff whatever this is called it stuff that makes uh, sequins which uh, jelly arts always uh, sends out with their their stuff so i'm going to do another layer on this one and we're going to see what happens to it because if you don't like let me see maybe i'll try it on this one this is the tissue paper though i'm a little afraid that it might tear but let me give it a shot let's just see what happens and I'm able to pick up some paint, which is nice. And it's a little stronger than it was before. So it's not tearing at all, except for where it tore before. But I was able to pick up some paint, which I think is really nice on that tissue paper. And you can always make uh, more layers, more more layers. I like this one just by that itself. So I'm not gonna take full play with it. But I see here, this one needs, you know, it's kind of a very simple, um, doesn't have a lot going on. So I'm gonna try to get this on. And I'm noticing that my my brayer is actually lifting off some of that paint, which is kind of cool. I'm going to use some blue just to kind of change up things. And basically, I'm at the cleaning up stage right now. So this is what I will be doing when I'm cleaning my plate. I kind of, you know, put some solid colors on and just let the paper uh, do it. Let it, the paper do the work. So there, I got that. I'm going to just put that blue on. One of the items you showed called something like punchinella. The punchinella, yes, what that is, is a, it's the stuff from sequins. It's the, it's the uh, excess oh. when they're punching sequins. Oh, okay. Somebody commented what that was. That's yeah. good to know. That's cool. punchinella, yes. <laughs> so thank you for who, that person for being, telling us what it is. Art song, Soul Echoes, you know all of the specific information. That's awesome. Now, it's funny because um, the, I never have, the punchinella, I just would call it the holy things, you know, but they're really, this is pretty, look how pretty that looks. And this is with the Kozel paper. Um, so now I've got all this excess stuff and I could leave it there. I can actually let that dry, like till, till it's dry, dry. And then um, I can put, I can, or I can clean it up, spend time cleaning it up with the hand sanitizer. But really, you know, I could also just put some white paint on and grab, pull up some, um, some more paper. I'm gonna grab a little bit of some 6H, this paper here. And I'm just gonna use some white again, the cheapest white, just to kind of pull it up a little bit. And I'm just going to try it again, but I have to do a very small coat or thin, thin coat. And really just trying to get all of that excess off. But I don't want to bore you with that because I want to show you what I will do. Now, just if I can't get all the paint off just with this run, I'll leave it on there. And I'll, in fact, I'm going to just do this. I'm going to leave the rice paper on for a little while. And then I won't even touch it until, and then it should just come off. 
the, or I can use deli paper or anything like that. All the paint will come off my plate. It should come off anyway. But let me explain something on this. Okay, so here's our tissue paper. And I'm gonna show you something that's just so cool. So we have, I'm gonna put something dark underneath it, like some of the pure paper so you can kind of see. We just grab that. Okay, here's the pure paper. I'm gonna put the pure paper underneath just for you to see what's underneath. So now I'm gonna take, this is uh, just some furniture wax. If you have um, microglaze, you know, you can use just, you know, anything that has a wax or oil, even like a olive oil would work too. But I'm gonna just put, I'm gonna put this on and I'm gonna stick it over the, uh, this is the tissue, right? This is the tissue rice paper. So I'm putting it over, so you can see how it's going transparent so you, or translucent. It's not totally transparent, but wherever the paint is, it's gonna resist. And wherever the tissue is, it's going to, you'll be able to see through. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on there, not too, too much. And then I'm gonna to try to be gentle. And I love this stuff because it makes my hands feel so good. And I even like, I know it's probably, maybe it's not supposed to go on your cuticles, but actually I think this stuff as I know is very nourishing and it will, it's, it's food safe. So I could probably put it on, I mean, I'm sure the skin, you know, it's not meant to go on skin, but I think it really would work uh, uh, to do your hands and everything else. So just wanted to show you, so when you move it around and you just take your time um, doing this, now it hasn't stained pink, but what's happened is it's gonna show what's underneath. So I basically have created a translucent, I don't know if you can see the difference. So you can see my hand underneath. Oh yeah, we um, can see it. Yeah. yeah, and then you can see it. So um, what you have now, so let's say you're doing collage, you're doing layering and you want to have the things underneath showing like this. I'm gonna just grab a little bit here. And so here, like, let's say you have a little piece here and now you wanna just layer, see how you can get these amazing textures and layers. But I would wait for the uh, wax to just be, get all the residue from the wax off first. You know, you can just wipe it off. Um, and it will, um, if you use PVA, it will glue just fine. Um, you know, I just wanna get all, just kind of wait a little bit till all that residue is off. See, it's not even coming off on the paper. So, you know, once you've got the wax, residue off it's and you don't feel greasy on your hands then you can take you can use it in your collages and you can you know have beautiful little layers um and then when the with the, what will happen or you can do it without the wax but this is just to show you these little tissue papers will work great with the white glue with actually i'm going to show you a little bit of nori paste when you find it just a little nori paste so I'll tear a little bit off because I really like this stuff. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this tissue paper, which I love the way it tears, by the way. It just tears with a soft edge. And I'm just gonna grab a little nori paste to show you how, um, so, so let's pretend this is a collage. <laughs> it's not much of one, but let's just pretend. Um, here, I'll do a little, uh, I'll use the red as the background and I'll put a little of this on. And this stuff is also doesn't hurt your fingers either. This nori paste, I mean, it can be repositioned. You can move it around. It doesn't, but it leaves a nice flat area here and you can put it over and it won't leave a residue. I'm just trying to do a little section just so you can see. Um, when I was at Nanta and I was like introducing people to the nori paste, people smelled it and said it smelled like lotion, which I thought yeah. was a good way to describe it. Right, right. And I just, yeah, it's amazing stuff. So you can see how... Now I've got this very soft edges here. And I, I'm just, I had this idea, I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna actually uh, cut the paper down. So, cause I, I'm really seeing this, there we go, that's what I wanted, right in there. So I've got this beautiful thing. And now when that dries, it will be still translucent, but I've got layers going on here. So um, that's why I like using the tissue paper because it's so, you've got little bits and pieces that you can uh, put little, just little elements in a collage or in a card or whatever you're working on. Like, um, so that wasn't a good substrate for that, but like those little artist trading cards you did at NAMTA or little postcards or just you know any kind of collage substrate, something um, on the stiffer side, this is a little too thin when I'm using, but um, you, can, you can really make some nice things out of your rice papers. So the last thing, I just wanna see how, oh, that's not gonna come off. There we go, starting to. So the paper is, you see how it's pulling off most of the, 
uh, paint. That, that's kind of what I was hoping for. Uh, some of the paper stuck probably, who knows why, but it did. And that's okay, but I've got some nice, um, most of the paper, the paint is coming off except for the edges. So, but wow, that's gonna be a gorgeous print too. And it has, that's my, uh, that's my 6H. See how nice, I love that paper. So, and then this part down, when it comes down to the, the little bits and pieces here, you can just use your, uh, this stuff here, lots of that. <laughs> And you can wash it with soap and water or whatever you want. I mean, there's really lots of ways to clean these. And baby wipes also work if you have baby wipes around. Um, I know hand sanitizer was sort of a uh, precious uh, fluid for a while. So I kind of stopped using it because I, you know, I mean, people, you couldn't even get it. But you can, if you don't want to um, use that, you can still, you can do it with, uh, with a baby wipe. You can do it. This stuff works the best. Let's just say it's especially if you let it sit on the plate for too long, and <laughs> you let it and it starts to marinate, you know, just too much. Um, sometimes you'll need to do that. And here I've got a little baby wipe, and that's going to kind of clean it off for good. And then, then I can store it when it's all done. But does anybody have any questions? I know I kind of went through the rice papers, and I, I didn't. Yeah, let me know what you which if you have any questions. Um, so far, no questions, but yeah, anyone who does have questions, feel free to ask, um, drop them in the comments. I so was I, and oh, how yeah. many people I don't see any, I don't see everyone because I'm doing this, but I'm hoping that we have we had a good turnout and I hope you had fun. Yeah. Hope you got inspired and uh, you know, hope that you will get some rice papers so that you can enjoy making uh, prints with the, with these papers because they're really fun. And yeah. you don't even have to use a, a jelly plate. I just thought it'd be fun to play with jelly plate today. I kind of was in the mood to do one, <laughs> work with it today. It's so fun to watch too. Like I really love watching you make prints. Isn't it fun? And yeah. there's so many more things. I mean, I could sit here all day, but I know I, you know, I've got to, I can't, but so I was going to do this one thing. I wanted to, you saw this happening. So I'm going to take this plate off for a sec. Okay. And I want to show you this, reveal this, because remember, you saw me doing, you know, doing a little thing on it. So let's do this in closing, right? I want to just show you how this thing looks. So we've got our little, this was our little uh, scribbly thing with on the, on the pure, pure paper. And look, it's, I just love the colors on that. So I'm just scraping it off and I, it's so satisfying. So you can do the painting uh, way in advance and then you can scrape it another time or have, you know, have fans, kids, if you want to, if you have kids, you want to, you have them scribble and draw and then you can or grandkids i mean for me it would be grandkids um you can have them do the scribbling on the uh, paper and the drawing and then you can add the paint and then let them scrape afterwards so it can be a, like a nice family activity um i don't think i'd trust i wouldn't want kids with my black paints but you know so i'd rather do that job but you know, it didn't take long to dry and look how pretty that is and I'll plan to fold this into a crane or something or a box like these little boxes that I love. Uh, these little sandbow boxes. I forgot how they, I forgot how to make them actually. <laughs> I have to remember. But like this one, I'm going to fold a crane just for fun because I think this stuff, this, these crayons don't feel like I put, I did it, but I don't feel this residue because I scraped off the wax, except I left pigment behind. So I hear some wax that I did, but still, <laughs> that's, that was the residue from the stuff. But I'm able to get a really unusual piece of paper. And this is a one of a kind. There's no other, no two alike, that's for sure. And I'm just going to pull. I'm going to um, answer like verbally some questions that came in. Yeah. Um, so somebody asked if the Hosho and Hanshi papers are the same GSM, and they're not. So thank you for asking that. Um, one of the papers Karen used earlier was the 6H, which is um, like I'd say our most popular paper. It's a whole shell paper. It's 70 GSM. It feels sturdy. Um, the tissue paper that she was using, which is the Hanchi paper, um, it comes in 500 and 100 sheet packs. The skis are 6A and 6E. Those are 28 GSM. Um, so it's the whole show 70 GSM and Hanchi 28 GSM. So it's really... Um, you're going to get some different uh, textures and weights with those papers. I, Karen kept describing the Hanshi as like a tissue paper. It really does feel like a tissue paper. 
It's actually intended for practice, you know, brush strokes, um, you know, because yeah. you really can go through a lot of them. But, but they're really, it's an interesting paper because it's thicker than tissue paper. It isn't really a good wet strength paper, if that makes sense. What I mean by that is like, if you get it wet, it's probably, I, I can see it's delicate and that's not a bad thing, but I, I had to um, be kind of adjust my thinking or my printmaking, um, you know, skill set or whatever it is, not really lack of, but I mean, I just needed to realize it was more delicate. So I had to go quickly, you know, quickly not press as hard on the, on the plate, things like that. You know, you can adjust your, your techniques depending on the papers you, you have, definitely. But I think that these came out, I love this paper. I was gonna finish this little crane just to show you. So one of a time crying crane, nobody else will ever see, <laughs> ever see this crane or one like it because it's been, it's been co you know, colored specially. And wouldn't that be fun to have some kids artwork on that or something? I think that'd be really fun. It's so so just bringing in the last of, I'll bring in some of these papers they've dried. I love this paper. And, and then I think you did one print, at least one print on the Kozo paper, right? Yes, and I'm gonna pull that off. This is, okay, yeah. so this is this, this is the tissue, um, 6A, which is this one, that one. So it came out beautifully. This is 6H. Now they curl, but you know, it's normal for them to curl, but it's, it's all right. Let me pull, this one's a, show. Yep. this is the 6T, which is, I love the detail on that one. Loco, a favorite. The 6T is like, wow, as well. Let me find the Kozo, it's somewhere in the pile here. Yeah, because Wanda, <laughs> you know, Wanda, we've seen Wanda a lot. Um, I think she's shopping as she's watching. <laughs> and so she was asking if the, Ko or she said Kosu, but I think I think maybe you're asking about the Kozo. It's hard to tell the spelling anyway, what we say versus how yeah. it's spelled. Right. Um, yeah, she was asking if the Kozo is a good choice or maybe like maybe ideas for what she could use it for. Yes, I think, well, the Kozo, well, let me find it for you. I know this is this yeah. just so y'all keep I'll keep I'll find it this is the 6JM just so you know uh, it's a little thinner than the the other one um, I'm gonna try to find that larger 6JM is a big sheet it's um like 12 by 18 inches yeah so I cut basically on that one I cut it in half um kind of fine I know the Kozo's here because I did a couple of prints on it so yeah, I'm, I'm trying, trying to remember. It. I want to say it was like you did something with red on it, but I could be wrong. Oh, I did I do something with red? Okay. Because oh. you should see my pile. If I could only, you know, this little area that you see right here. <gasps> well, what you what's outside of this area is frightening. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> uh, so I think we can all relate. <laughs> but it's a good thing. It's fun. So let me see if I can find it. I know I did it. There's this is the no, this is that's the rice paper. Let's see. That is the tissue. So I know it's got to be in the pile. So I'm going to keep pulling stuff towards. Oh, yeah. oh, that's so six, cool. I love how that came out. That's six uh, H as well. This is the one that tore terribly. And that one is, uh, that's the six G. But what I really like is I'm going to, I've got some nice little pieces. So no, no loss, you know, just. Yeah, actually, Julie made a comment on that. Julie Crouch said, even the bits that didn't work as expected were very informative, which is, I think that's true. <laughs> it's helpful to oh, see. Yeah. More of these tissues. Let me just grab. I know there's got to be Kozo down here somewhere. Um, I did a print. I know. Oh, there it is. I think I put it down on the. Oh, yeah. The most gorgeous print of a wall was the Kozo. Oh, that's the yeah. Kozo. And I did have some. It wasn't tearing. It did. It might have torn a little. I can't tell. But it really took a really nice print. Yeah, very clear, actually. Um, and that little off white. So it, it is not torn. It's just that some of the paint, paint didn't lift because it looks like or just some of the white showing, but the lower layers of the paint didn't lift. But it took a really good print. I'm really very uh, pleased with the Kozo. Now the Kozo too is is 100% acid free, which means it's like archival. And I'm going to show you a little thing. This is a, a little pH test pen. And I'm going to just do a little test here. Kozo, see how it, well, that one is not Kozo. Yep, it's not. That's kind of turning yellow. So that's not the one I'm thinking. All right. So when it turns yellow, or this is like an in-between, sort of a, not a violet, but it's in-between. So it's kind of a eh, neutral. But you can actually do your tests and just do a little, just a test of your paper, um, seeing if they're acid-free or not. Um, some will turn yellow, yellow, and then you'll know it's not. This is a violet. Very, uh, it's acid-free. So that's our uh, 6A. Um, this is 6H, I know is not. So, but basically that one is purple. So you see how it dried kind of purple? That's going to tell me that it's acid-free. So 
Kozo is a beautiful, I think it came out, that's my favorite print right here. It's just so pretty. So there you go. I'm hoping that you had fun. I did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Grace, I'm going to drop the link in um, into the comments right here for the Kozo. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes it could be a little bit tricky finding stuff um, by the skew or the spelling of an item. But yeah, we do have the Kozo paper up there. And the Kozo paper. The, um, yeah, yeah. Shopify is that where it's at right now? Yeah, and I mean, we have other um, retailers who carry our stuff, but I know that sometimes people just want one place to buy everything. So to make it easier on you guys, I'll just, that's the links that I've been dropping in. Yeah, and this is a pretty new um, paper within, you know, it's, it's fairly new, so it may not, not all the retailers will have it, but I, I think that some major re retailers are looking to get it, right? Yeah, yeah. so that, that pH pen, it dried completely purple, and that's, that is a, that's, so this is 100% acid free. It scared me for a second because it was not purple right away, but <laughs> now that it's dry, it's perfectly pur purple. And same with the tissue paper, which is something that I could say doesn't always happen is tissue or calligraphy paper, tissue paper isn't always uh, acid free, but you know, came out nice. Um, and I love, I love all these. I can't wait to play, do some collages. Maybe I'll just uh, post some of those later some of those uh, little collages. I'll put them, I'll do some, and then you can share them on, on Instagram. We can share them that way. Yes, yes. And if you all make some prints, tag us, because we always love to see it. And maybe we won't get to it right away, but we do see them all. And other people see them too when you tag us in it. So it's always nice to share and just kind of build up yeah. the images. Yeah. yeah. Now these, like this one here, I really, this one I just think came out really fun. And with the tearing thing, you know, well, that's the way it's going to happen. But the rest of it looks just can't wait to put that in in some collage. But it's so pretty. It is. And I love the colors you use. And I love that every because everyone's are going to come out different, like the colors that they choose, the materials that they choose. So it's such a right. And then what will happen now with this being because it is rice paper, um, mm -hmm. it's going to it's great for collage because it has a rough edge for, for the you would, it is actually it actually gra helps grab the glue. And when mm -hmm. you put it on a, on a substrate or another piece of paper, it just come, you know, comes really uh, it's really gorgeous. So I'll show you what I mean by when I tear it too. Now this doesn't have a color course. So when I tear a paper for collage on that, I like to use the side that's uh, rough here. So I've got the soft little fibers that come out, which you can't get with a lot of papers. So if I can show you, I don't know if you see them, probably not, but I see them on my end, very little delicate, little furry little fibers. So that really is just makes it a very soft edge and I can do some really fun collages with that. Can't wait. I have some ideas. <laughs> so that's well, it, I think. I think that's it. And I think that's it for the questions, um, but we're always here. So feel free to reach out to us if anything else comes up. Um, and we'll be back at it in, I guess, the next two weeks with another YouTube live. Um, we're going to work on getting things synced up so that it syncs up what we're streaming to the um, scheduled um, live stream. And, and you know what would be great is asking, maybe I'm going to just kind of, you could, if you want to unspotlight me, we can just say hello. Um, if you'd like anybody that's watching right now, um, write a comment of what you'd like to see, because you know, you can just pretty much, uh, we'd be happy to show whatever you'd like to see. So yeah. write in the comments, those, uh, any, and any time, even after this uh, stream is over, put in the comments below, what would you like to see uh, us uh, do uh, going forward? Wouldn't that be fun, Phoebe? No, that's perfect. I'm glad you said it because I was thinking about mentioning that too. So that's perfect because we want to make what you all want to see. Um, yeah. cause Karen has a million ideas. She's taught so many classes um, but yeah, we want to tailor it to what you guys would be most interested or excited or curious about. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, we just want to come here and play and have fun. So <laughs> we want to help you inform you as well. So, right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Karen. Thank you everybody for watching us. It's always so nice to actually interact with you all and kind of answer questions and get to show you things. So until we meet again. Well, that was really fun. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, and everyone's so sweet. They're saying thank you. It was Yay. fun. And thank you. Time. Thank you. We'll see you. We'll see you next time. All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.